Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are the graphical tools or pictures that we use to visualize and understand relationships between sets. When we use a Venn diagram to visualize the relationship between sets, the entire data set under consideration, also known as the universal set, is drawn as a rectangle. As you see below, this U represents the universal set along with this rectangle. Now, any subset of the universal set will be drawn as a circle completely contained within the rectangle. So let's look at this example. Given the universal set of all the 26 letters of the alphabet, the lowercase, represent the subset AEIOU of the universal set in the Venn diagram. So here's the Venn diagram containing the universal set. This is all 26 lowercase letters. And then to represent the set AEIOU, I just put them in a circle completely contained within the rectangle. So there's the subset AEIOU of the universal set of 26 lowercase letters. All right, let's take a look at another example. It says, create a Venn diagram to represent the relationship between the sets. The first set is the set X, such that X is an 80s Egypti. And they're saying that that's a subset of the set X, such that X is a mosquito, which would mean that all 80s Egypti are also mosquitoes. So first we start off with the universal set, the one that's the superset of the other, the one that contains the other. So that's the set of mosquitoes. 80s Egypti is a subset of mosquitoes, so mosquitoes are the universal set. Within that universal set of mosquitoes, we're going to place a circle completely contained within it for the 80s Egypti mosquito. So this Venn diagram visually represents that all 80s Egypti mosquitoes are also mosquitoes. Now let's go back in the other direction. In the Venn diagram below, it describes a relationship between two sets. The universal set is the set of all quadrilaterals, and the subset of that is the set of all rhombuses. So the set of rhombuses is within, or is a subset of, the set of quadrilaterals. And it's a proper subset, so we'll write that out as x such that x is a rhombus is a subset of x such that x is a quadrilateral. So the set of rhombuses is a subset of the set of quadrilaterals. All right, now let's look at another definition, uh, another definition. Two sets with no elements in common are called disjoint sets. Notice they don't overlap here, so there's no place to put any elements that would be in both sets. So they don't share any sets in common. So let's go ahead and create a Venn diagram for the universal set U here and, and its two subsets. So here are the two subsets. And here's the universal set U. So first, I'm going to put the two subsets in. So I have 159 as subset A and 0378 as subset B. So those are the two subsets. But you notice there are things in the universal set that are not in either subset. For instance, the number 2 is not in either subset. The number 4 is not in either subset. And neither is the number 6. So where do you put them? Well, you put them inside of the universal set, but not inside of any subset. So this would represent two disjoint sets. Notice these sh sets share no elements in common. All right, now let's talk about how the subsets actually partition the universal set into regions. So the subset A of U, the universal set, partitions the Venn diagram into two regions. The first region is the subset A itself. So that would be this region here, the subset A of the universal set. The next set would be everything outside of A, and we give that a name. We call that A's complement. So the other region, the set of all elements in the universal set U that are not in the subset A is called the complement of set A and is denoted A prime. So you see that apostrophe there. Everything outside of that red circle is A prime. So that's A prime pulsing there. All right. 
So you can also write this in set builder notation as the set of x's that are elements of the universal set such that x is not an element of a. So everything in the universal set that's not in a. Let's take a look at an example. So here I'm given the universal set of all the lowercase letters of the alphabet. So this is the universal set of all lowercase letters of the alphabet. And what I want to do is I want to sub represent the subset A of that universal set, the set of all vowels. So the set of all vowels would just be written as a uh, set within the universal set. So we know this is the subset A. So what is A's complement? Well, A's complement would just consist of everything outside of A. So this is A's complement here. Everything except the vowels A, E, I, O, U. So this is the, letter, the letters of the alphabet excluding all the vowels. So that would be the complement of set A. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here I have this universal set consisting of all the kingdoms um, in biology. You have the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, fungus, protista, and so forth. So these are the kingdoms. And then I have a subset here which contains two of those kingdoms. So what is the complement of set A? Well, the complement of set A contains every element that's not in set A. So that's this one, this one, this one, and this one. So this is the complement of set A. Everything in the universal set that's not in set A. All right, one last one. So here, given the universal set consisting of these numbers, these eight numbers, and the set A consisting of these numbers, we need to find the complement of A. Well, everything that's not in A is represented by these here, one, three, five, and seven, and that is the complement of A. So we denote that A's complement is equal to one, three, five, seven.